This chapter or learning module focuses on the preparation of the statement of cash flows. This statement presents a detailed summary of where cash came from and how it was used. Virtually all U.S. companies use the indirect method, so we will spend most of our time discussing this method. The statement of cash flows explains how the amount of cash on the balance sheet at the beginning of the period became the amount of cash reported at the end of the period. So it simply explains the change in cash. The statement of cash flows reports cash inflows and outflows in three broad categories, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. As I just stated, the statement of cash flows reports the cash receipts and cash payments from operating, investing, and financing activities during a period in a format that reconciles the beginning and ending cash balances. The information in a statement of cash flows helps investors, creditors, and others assess the following. The first thing is the company's ability to generate future cash flows, the company's ability to pay dividends and meet obligations. And again, in order for a company to pay its employees, settle debts, or pay dividends, it must have adequate cash. It also explains the reason for differences between net income and net cash provided by operating activities. Again, I'm going to elaborate on that in the next slide, as well as throughout this learning objective. And then lastly, the cash investing and financing transactions during the period so we can get a better understanding of why both assets and liabilities changed during the period. The handout that was posted on Blackboard summarizes this information. The operating activities section focuses on the company's ability to generate cash through operations. So typical inflows are from the sale of goods or services, and typical outflows are to suppliers and employers. Many believe this section is the most important because it's the best measure of a company's ability to continue. In essence, does the company generate sufficient cash? We look at this section to determine if the company has enough cash to run its day-to-day -day operations. Companies classify as operating activities some cash flows related to investing and financing activities. For example, receipts of investment revenue, such as interest and dividends, are classified as operating activities. So are payments of interest to lenders. Why are these considered operating activities? Because companies report these items in the income statement where the results of operations are shown. Let's take a look at our investing activities. When it comes to this classification, I want you to think of the inflows as well as the outflows to come from either the sale or purchase of property, plant, and equipment, as well as investments, and also if a company is making or collecting loans to other entities. I think the last thing we have to talk about are the financing activities. When it comes to these activities, I want you to think of the inflows as any um, cash that's received from the issuance of common stock or debt, such as bonds and notes. And as far as the outflows, I want you to think of any payments that are made to the stockholders as in the form of dividends or any payments that are made to retire long-term debt or reacquire capital stock. Not all of a company's significant activities involve cash. Examples of significant non-cash activities are the issuance of common stock to purchase assets, converting bonds into common stock, issuing debt to purchase assets, and lastly, exchanging plant assets. Companies do not report in the body of the statement of cash flows significant financing and investing activities that do not affect cash. They will report these activities in either a separate schedule at the bottom of the statement of cash flows or in a separate note. This exercise is very similar to one of your homework problems, 
except instead of cash inflows, outflows, or no effect, you will need to determine the effect on operating section using add, subtract, or NA. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video. The general format of the statement of cash flows presents the results of the three activities we just discussed, operating, investing, and financing. We also need to disclose any significant non-cash investing and financing activities. In order to perform step one, a company must convert net income from an accrual basis to a cash basis. There are two methods a company may select, the indirect method or the direct method. Both methods arrive at the same amount for net cash provided by operating activities or used, but what happens is they differ in how they arrive at that amount. The indirect method adjusts net income for items that do not affect cash. Most companies use this method. The direct method shows operating cash receipts and payments. It is prepared by adjusting each line item on the income statement from the accrual basis to the cash basis. The next learning objective will illustrate the more popular indirect method. We will also discuss the direct method in the appendix. So we will cover both methods, but keep in mind most companies use the indirect method, so most of our time will be spent covering this method. The cash flows from operating activities section always appears first followed by the investing activity section and then the financing activity section. The sum of the operating, investing, and financing activity sections equals the net increase or decrease in cash for the period. This amount is added to the beginning cash balance to arrive at the ending cash balance, the same amount that is reported on the balance sheet. Any significant non-cash financing and investing activities will be reported at the bottom of the statement of cash flows or in a separate note.